I'll come back. Uh, as usual, try to try to be discuss what we had yesterday. I mean, one, one thing is obviously that tell me if things are not clear. It's, you, you should tell it always, but I'm not. Okay, I think things are clear. I think you understand it because. <laughs> we take a lot of time explaining, but if not, tell me, because uh, I don't have other way to know. So, uh, unless after the exam. <laughs> uh, so, okay, what we discussed yesterday were uh, continuing this question of, of models in which some stylized models of how information gets built into prices, so this economic style uh, type of models, which are, okay, models, so simplified views of the world, but give some good insights. So one was this figure that we discussed, so there was this Gloucester-Milgram model. Well, it's written there, I don't write it up. And, uh, and so what we have seen is that we had two parameters in this world, uh, W, well, okay, several parameters, but what was very interesting was this W and sigma. One was the dispersion of, uh, of the way uninformed traders trade, which is this W, and sigma was the dispersion of information, of how, how, uh, how well informed traders are. Okay, so we had these type of uh, th these two measures, and what we saw that already in a stylized model we can come up with different regimes. One regime, which we said that is on the right hand side here, where the the, the dis dispersion of these uh, uninformed people is very large. There is only one solution. So we have we had the spread, the the, the bidas spread on the y-axis. There is only one solution. Yeah. About this curve, you said that if, if W is large, then it's easy to make money out of uninformed traders. Yes. Right? But uh, if W is in the middle range, then one uh, market maker would choose the upper one. But isn't the lower one easier to make money? No, the, on the upper one. So, so what happens here? This is the spread. So in the first approximation, this is the money or proportional to the money that a market maker makes in the business. So, okay. So, so, so yeah. So in this regime, what we say is that there is a small spread solution. There is one solution. It is relatively small spread. But... As W increases, the dispersion of these uninformed increases, so they continue to trade always. So some, the price is now 100, and some want to trade at 1, to st start uh, selling at 1. And okay, so it's, 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 and others want to trade at 300. So super dispersed. Many people, so, so small gain on each trade, but everyone always wants to trade. It's a money machine. Uh -huh. I mean, the uninformed. Here, you have two solutions. So in, there is a middle range of this W over sigma. You have two solutions. If there is a single market maker in the world, what he would say is that, okay, it's better, the upper solution is more gain for him. And if he's alone, he might choose that. Though the gain at every transaction. Then, yes, so this is per transaction. I mean, the units are, we don't have units here, but yes, for each transaction. So he can choose to be up here if he's alone. But if we are two of us, and you choose to be there, I might choose to be here, everyone will, tra will trade with me, I will make a smaller gain than if I were here but you will make zero gain because nobody trades with you. Of course, we can agree that we all put our, price, our spreads here. So I mean, there, there are things which are not in a model like this, but there are two solutions, one in which he's making a lot of money, one in which he's relatively okay. If you have competition, you expect to go to the downward curve, but that, that becomes a field which is not studied by the model. And, and there is the third region, as we said, so below some, some critical value of this uh, uh, w, simply there is no solution to this. Meaning, there are so, 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 so the uninformed people are so non dispersed, or another, or the informed people, ha, people have so super information. So the sigma is okay, so the sigma is the, uh, maybe the W is easy to understand, it's the dispersion of uninformed. The sigma is the dispersion of information, so it's, it's how different the true price, so the final price is from the price I have now. So if it's, it's a very big difference, then, then, then there is a very good information of those who are informed traders. And so there is a region where, uh, where the ratio of this is small. For this market maker, there is no way to set any spread in which he can make up for the loss that he had against the informed traders to make up for this loss on the uninformed, okay? So it was, it, it, yeah. Yes. Physical meaning. Uh, uh, I would say that no real physical. 
in, in this sense, there is no, no nothing to take home from it. And we can analyze it, so it's easy. It, uh, the way we, I mean, from then on, we have one solution, so this solution diverges, and one remains for larger W, but no, so there is no, no special case there. Numerically, there is a, there is a uh, divergence, but not very important. Okay, so, so in a super simple model like this, you, you can get some intuition about, uh, about a market can, how a market can work. We discussed a bit all these problems with the noise trader models, among which I think there was the main, so the, the issue was that, okay, can you, in all these models assume a one-step game where there is a final price, and then this final price is the price at which the market maker then get, can get out of the market and, uh, and put in his pocket his gain, okay? And this is not obvious if we, if then you think that, okay, the market maker bought from you, but then he has to exit this position against someone, maybe against another market maker, then the game continues. So he will also, with the fact that he wants to exit his position, he wants to, he will impact the price, changes all this picture. We'll see a model, I think, tomorrow where, I mean, a very short model where, where this is taken into account. Uh, just to make it exit the position, that's a clear claim, right? So if you have something in your pocket, you sell it, that's okay, but if you are, you sold something, then you have to rebuy it, so to be at zero at the, at the very end. Um, so, so, okay, so there were these discussions, and then we went to more empirical approach, so, so there was this question of, okay, there is this, this way claim of fundamental efficiency that prices contain all information available in the market, so it's already ill-defined, but maybe because I made, I claimed it like that. And so we discussed a bit these questions of, okay, can this be the case? This is what I called liquidity paradox. There was a question afterwards, why is it a paradox? Well, it's not a paradox. It's a, economists call it a paradox. It's a contradiction. That if you understand, so what did we see there? Is it, do, do, do you remember that, that actually if you look at empirically the liquidity that there is in the market, so any moment, what is the volume available at the best price to, for selling or buying? It is uh, several orders of magnitude lower than the total daily volume traded and the total and even lower than the total uh, market capitalization of the stock. So if you want to trade anything which is uh, a meaningful quantity, 1%, uh, 0,1%, 10 to the minus 4 of the, of, of the total value, which is a possibility you have to trade for, for days or weeks. So this was the claim being a bit vague still, that if this is the case, indeed no, you cannot have all information in the prices because nobody knows your, your true intent. You're trading a small quantity now, but in your mind you have something much longer term. So it must, it must be only on a longer term that maybe this gets in, built into prices. And to see this empirically, we got to the question of, well, indeed, there is a very long-term persistence of the signs in the trades. So, so there was the, the correlation of the trade sign. Right, and uh, which okay, which is, is a sign that people are doing some okay for long time. The order flow is persistent, and we discussed very briefly this question of uh, of okay, if you call this the correlation, you want you might try to write it up in in a term if you if you know the identity of traders, which is a complicated question in itself. We won't didn't go into detail. We assume that we might know this. You can write up this thing in somehow two terms, which we call, so we, here we were a bit in a hurry yesterday, so you can write up in just the sum as, if you know the identities of people, you can write up this uh, correlation as splitting and herding term, where essentially these were off diagonal terms, so cases where the actor I and the actor J wouldn't be the same in, in the correlation, and when, when it's the diagonal term. Okay, uh, I wrote, don't write it up again. I, we, we said it yesterday. There are in the slides you find it. Okay, and what we found is that well, indeed, well, what we assumed or I, I sort of hinted on is that that splitting is a, so. This is the correlation. The sum of this is what we have seen here. So that that the that the splitting part dominates over herding on essentially all scales that we study here. These are intraday time scales. So let's say 1,000, this is in trade time as we discussed. So 1,000 trades is order of a day in this period, okay? So this is just to catch up with yesterday. And uh, okay, then there are two things that I wanted to discuss about here, this. 
So actually, uh, to, but only going very deeply into, uh, very, very, very slightly, a point that I wanted to, to mention is that is that actually what what I have very briefly written up, uh, it's, it's in the notes, it's a very simple calculation that one can so somehow define this type of correlation simply as, uh, as, uh, as uh, okay, as the following. Uh, so, so if you, for two agents or two traders, I, so, so, sorry, uh, trader I, you can define uh, his autocorrelation. So which will be C split, okay. Uh, Okay, let, let, sorry, let's be, let's be cleaner. So you can do something like this. So there was a, it's a sum over i, so, so, so the, the split is so that it can be written up as a sum, okay, you sum over different traders, but there is a term which is the activity. How often uh, does, okay, it's here we have I, I, how often does uh, the same trader trade two times apart? How often does this happen divided by the number of points, let's say? So it's a probability of being active two times later and the actual correlation of the signs. Okay. And, and, and actually one can look at... Um, the two terms, th these are related to things we have seen before. So this activity is, okay, how bursty you are behaving. And actually one can look at the behavior of this. Okay, let's, okay, let, okay maybe rather look at this curve here. So what we see here is this uh, PIJ, so this term here. So how probable them to be active, but we, we plot it only for leg one. Yeah. So the fa given one I traded now, how probably is it that J trades in the next uh, time step? This is real data, so people. As a function of PIPJ, meaning PIP, it would be on the identity line if they are independent, right? And what we can see is that, so the black ones are the, the off-diagonal elements, so when I is not equal to J, the blue is the, the diagonal I equal to J, you can see that the off-diagonal is roughly on the identity line, so agents seem to act independently from each other. But if you look at the same agent, okay, at least for leg one, you see that they, are, they have a much higher probability of acting. Uh, so, so if I trade it now, I have a much higher probability to trade in the next time step than, than, than a, an independent model would say. So it's, it's these bursts of activities that we have seen on other scales before. And of course, we, we, we plot it here for tau equal to one, but it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's for, for any time scale. So essentially, it's, uh, so the, this, uh, this PII has a power law which uh, decay in time. Okay? So, but this is just, just, uh, uh, just to know. So that is it for the, this question of persistence. I guess it's clear. I mean, it was a simple thing. Okay. Now the question is, is um, what I discussed all the time, and I mentioned it all the time that we will get back to this. So, so the question of, of, of price impact. So okay. So how does, how do actually these trades move the price itself? And, and, uh, and my claim was that instead of these models on inform complicated economic type models of information, we will try to come up with mechanical models of how, uh, how simply trades, which means that there are some fluctuations in, in the supply and the demand, how they mechanically change the price and how this can, be, how this can lead to diffusivity. So that's it for persistent and I wanted to discuss more uh, about impact which I almost started yesterday, but then I didn't have time. So I said it millions of times, price impact is the correlation between, uh, between the order flow, so correlation between trade, yeah. Can you explain the price graph again? Yes, I actually I didn't explain it much because, uh, yeah, forget that it's, it's uh, assume that it's uh, essentially P, PII that we had. It's a slight difference, but it doesn't matter. I just want to say is that the probability, so the, 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 the persistence in activity for the same person has a power law each decay. So it's, 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 it's again a long range correlation in the, if it's a, just a zero and one if I am active or not, there is again a long range correlated process.
but we didn't discuss it in detail. I mentioned it. On, I mean, it's, it's good to know, but we won't. Okay, there are many things that, uh, that come up that, that we don't have time to go into detail, but just I mentioned. So this is one of them. So okay, so this is price impact. I, just, I, mean, I write it up again. So, so it's essentially the correlation of uh, trade direction and subsequent the price change, okay? So we'll write up properly, and uh, and uh, okay, you can. Okay, here I said trade direction. It could be any event, right? You, you could measure the impact. So what is this? This is the response of the system to what you're doing. It could be anything that is. We will only discuss trades here, but of course it could be the question of limit orders. It could be cancellations. Any type of event can have a, can 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 generate a response in the system, and um, and of course the problem is that. Okay, so the correlation of the trade direction and subsequent prices, but we call it impact, so we think it's due to the trade, but how do we know that the price wouldn't have changed without us? So this is always a difficulty in, in trying to measure the response in a system like this. You don't know what the system would have done without you. You cannot easily do experiments. And uh, so we'll see how, how to study this. And, and actually this price impact, so what we do today, we will discuss, I think, only empirical results of, what, of price impact to be able to get to models afterwards. And we'll divide this in two. So we will, uh, okay, actually it's an important thing to mention. So we will divide it in two. So first it will be the question of individual trades. So that's, that, that's clear, I think. But the question will be a notion that actually I, I mentioned yesterday, but I, have to, I want to define it properly. So given that people are autocorrelated, as we have uh, seen here in the red curve, meaning that you make a decision now which, which you are fulfilling on a long time. You want to buy uh, a thousand shares and you're doing it for two days. This, this is the big decision will be called meta order. It's just a question of language. So meta order is the big decision that you want to do, which has to be cut up into individual orders or trades, okay? So the existence of meta orders essentially is seen from the red, and we will divide the question of impact into two, individual trades and meta orders. Um, and, uh, and okay, yeah, so there are some comments on this that we made before, that there are said two, two different beliefs of this impact. So if it's really you changing the price or you forecasting the price, this is two different schools. So is, is the price there existing without you, meaning that there is a price discovery that you're making, you want to understand what the price is, what the true price is, which is a bit like these models that we discussed uh, uh, in the previous talks, or it's a price formation. The price actually moves just because you're doing something. Well, I believe in the second one, and that's what we'll see that I think that's the case. But there are several schools on this. So what do we want to measure? Um, so okay, just, just to be a bit more clear on this. So one, what one would like to measure as, as impact at a leg. Uh, okay, let's say this. I write it up, and then I explain what I want. So to be formal, one wants to measure something like this. So what do you want to measure? You execute at time t. You execute, so execution means trade. Okay, it's, it's a bit of a language question. Executing a trade. You're executing at t. There is some state of the world. Which can matter for you. You, you do not know what actually these, num these things are. It will be the state of the limit order book. It will be some states of the market. And so your question is, what is your impact at time t plus l? How, how, how does the price change until t plus l? Okay, so this is this type of thing that you want to measure. We'll write it up in, in more proper terms. But the issue is this, that of course what you want to, what you would like to measure is the following. You define it like in the following manner. You say, okay, what is the expectation of the meat price at t plus l? Given the fact that I traded and the state of the world was F uh, T, okay, clear? But of course what you care is what would have happened if I wasn't there. So actually what you would like to measure is somehow this.
Okay, so I'm writing up simple stuff, but it's good to think about it once. Yes. Does I stand for impact. Yes, I stands for impact. So this is a definition. You, you, the way you would like to def define this. Sure, but how did the price move given that I traded? And of course, there, are some con there might be some conditioning variables. But, uh, but of course, you want to subtract somehow what would it have done if the world was the same, but I didn't come to trade, right? Is this clear what I'm writing here? So what you want to say is that at, at, at time t, you're trading. What you care is what will the price become at t plus l given that you traded in this state of the world, okay, FT is ill-defined. Everything, I mean, you, you can imagine that, that uh, if your trade happens during uh, Christmas, it has a different impact because everyone is at home at Christmas, I don't know. Uh, then if it's on a day where there is a huge market crash happening in the US and everything, everyone is there. So, so there, there are some variables that might control this dependence. We will forget later, but, but in theory, there might be variables that, that I mean, it's okay. Imagine most of you are physicists. Okay, so imagine you're doing an experiment in physics, but you don't know, don't yet know what, uh, it's not that they gave you, reproduce this experiment, but it's a new thing, so you don't know what are the, the variables that can matter. Maybe it's the temperature in the room has an effect on the critical point in a system, whatever. So, but what you want to subtract, of course, in this case, you want to care how much the price moved because I did something. So you want to, ideally, you would want to subtract what would have happened if I had not done this execution. So it's, this is the, the dual of, of this, okay? So it's essentially, you, you look at, so in a physics language, you look at the response of a system to something you did, but you want to subtract the expected move of the system without you. So, so you really want to look at the response. To you. Yes. So, but the difficult, is there a question? The difference between these two and So, the difference between these two is actually the, the, the response of the system to, to what you do, really, right? Uh, I've done trade based on the state of the world. First time, I did it, uh, I've done Yeah, so, so I, I want to know what happens to a ball if I kick it. Okay? But the ball is already moving. So then I kick it, I measure what happens, but I want to subtract what the ball would have been done, doing if I hadn't kicked it, which was already moving somewhat. Okay? So, uh, I think it's, it's, it's an okay comp set, it's just it never comes up in physics. In physics, you can do experiments, typically. You, you, in, in physics, you, you can't really know what the system, I don't know, you know that the system is in equilibrium, and then you kick it. So you can, and then you can reproduce this, then you want next time it's in the same state, somehow you, you, you try to govern the state of the system, and then you don't kick it, and you measure this one, okay? It's, it's not always trivial to do, but in most of the physics experiments, it's a doable thing. Is this clear? Okay. So this is what you want to measure, but you cannot measure this, of course, so actually what, what you can in practice measure, so let's say this is some ideal thing, uh, if I write here, it's visible. Uh, so, so what you can actually observe instead of this, so let's say, let's call it an observed impact at T plus L by in the same language, so pom, pom, pom. Instead, what you can measure is, well, it's, it's simple, is simply what happened to the system Okay, it's, 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 it's basic what I'm writing up. So the first term is the same. Okay? And you can just, well, what you can measure is really subtract the state of the system in the moment you acted. Right? The, 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 the price, uh, so what you want, to, what the, the, the variable you're measuring at the time you, 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 you acted. Okay, you cannot do much. So exactly what, what is the difference between these two? is this, I mean, uh, is this minus this? I don't have to write it up, right? So, so, so the difference between this and this will be the difference between the second term here and the second term here, which is exactly, okay, what, 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 what the price would have done without me in this language. 
Well, okay, which you could imagine that it's, it's not very important. Actually, we'll see that often you can forget, but most probably people traded because they expected the price to move up without doing anything, right? So, so it's, it's, it's a dangerous assumption to, to, to use this instead of this. But this you cannot measure. And, um, and okay, so, 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 so uh, what, what is a lucky case actually that what one finds out that, uh, so what is my order of writing here? <laughs> That nothing would have without us, nothing would have happened. We don't know what really to do, and okay, luckily, so 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 the difference, which will be actually, we often call it prediction. This is pred, but it's not really important. So just the difference between this will be will be exactly what where the price would have gone if we uh, haven't traded. So the change of the price if you hadn't failed. Okay, then I'm not doing anything here. So, okay, actually, what is luck that in practice one finds that this is not a very bad approximation, but just to get an idea of what you can do in a market like this, of course, possible measures. Well, one is that, okay, you hope you can do a, you, you can do an experiment, just it will it won't be cheap, or it depends. So you can do a random experiment. And this is things people do, and I analyze data of this. So, so what you do is a random trade. Essentially, okay, what you, say, what you hope is that, okay, if I'm just by chance choosing moments when I'm trading, on average, this thing should be Sorry, this thing should be zero. You hope that it averages out, so it's doable. The problem is that, of course, it means that you have to go to the market, you have to do trades in random moments, which will, won't be, they, might, it, they will cost you. It, it, is, it is not free to do, or they will at least, so in some way they will cost you, we'll see how. Yes? Because, so what does this mean? It's, 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 if I hadn't traded now, what would the price have done, going up or down? If I'm choosing properly randomly, we have seen that the price is essentially diffusing, so on average it should, uh, if I have a large number of data points, on average it should be okay. You can, uh, okay, you can, uh, you can uh, try to find trades uh, which, of which you know that there is no information in it. So, which is a bit harder, so, so, uh, so let's call it to be more clear in random moments. So it's similar to what it is before, but okay, uh, let's look at the data and try to identify maybe people who trade for other reasons, not because they have a prediction on this move. It's, it's possible, maybe. So it, it's harder. It's harder to believe than an experiment for if you come from physics. But it's po it's a possibility that you try to choose moments. So it's 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 at least free, or you can try to. You can try to model uh, this thing separately. Uh, okay. Now, the possibility is that, okay, you, you have some separate model of what the market would have done. So if you have a lot of data, you, you might be able to, 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 to measure, to, 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 to understand the structure of this second term. Okay? Yes. So what, yeah, so exactly. Now the question here, are these the same? Of course, this is the question. Yes. It's interesting uh, the fact that the, the impact of random trades, but usually the trades are not random. Right? 
exactly. So, so the question is, there, there are these th three things that you can do to, I mean, either you can forget that this exists here, but th that is a bit dangerous. You can do three types of measures, do random or do, I, I go to people who traded because they had an idea of what this is and ask them what it was. They, they might tell me if it was in the past, they might tell me just the number, what they expected the price to move in that moment. Or if you work on this, you can do it yourself. So, but there are several ways to do this. There is no trivial thing. It's, I mean, the problem is that, okay, you can, this experiment is physics-like, but it's not like in physics uh, in general. Okay, so, so, so find, okay, that's, that's a bit the hardest, uh, in a sense, to understand. So maybe I understand that, okay, on average, I don't know how this behaves. But in the moments when you trade, I know what it does because I know that you're, you're, you're not trying to predict the price, you're just buying because uh, for, for some other reason. Let's say you're, or, okay, let's, let's, let's do a simple example. I, saw, I know you're selling only because uh, you want to e exit this, the market and you want to do something completely different in your life. So I can guess, okay, so it's not because you see what the price is going to do in the next, uh, time that you're doing, that you're acting, but for completely other reasons. So I can expect that, on a, that, that, that this averages to zero on your own trade. So how, uh, from user's executing, not non-executing, but you would like to calculate non-executing one, so by... Yeah, but what I can hope is that the moments when you choose to trade are some random moments, so you don't have a prediction on this, this, is aver this averages to zero on these moments. So it means that it doesn't mean that the state of the world is changing in this way? No, just that the, the state of the world being F. Because the world means that the world, not the world, yeah? The yeah. state of the world, you mean that the state of the, um, the, uh, the, the, the market that we have, for example, by some, yeah. some that external effects are uh, going to have some changes, yeah? Yes. Is it true? So it means that so in random moments that, for example, somebody else is yeah, but I hope if they are random, that things averages out, uh, average out, and uh, and so all these terms, so it averages out on F, but it also that this has a zero average. Okay, we can uh, let's continue, and we can get back to this. So there are several ways to do this. Actually, what is lucky is that they lead to the same result, roughly. So similar. Results, so, so, so okay, you, you can lucky, you can measure things, but it's not obvious to, to so, I mean, you, you have to choose one of these. And does, is this okay? So, so okay, so what do you want to really measure? So, okay, now, if, if you verify that, that, uh, okay, what does this mean that these are similar, that, that somehow this term here probably is non-zero on average, but it's negligible to, 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 to your effect on the market, okay? On short time scales. Is this clear? And so you want to, okay, so, 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 so what you typically want to, one possible measure that you want to do if you are, uh, if, uh, is to look at the response of the systems, system. So what you can measure, well, one definition actually that we'll do, you define a response in the following way. Uh, you do uh, look at the following average. Okay. So what you do is, uh, okay, first of all, there are many simplifications here, but this, uh, is it clear what we do? You trade at Time, or someone trades at time t, there is a sign, so this is uh, this we discussed, so this is the sign of the trade at time t, and you correlate this to the price change from t to t plus l, t plus l right? This is a response function. And, um, and, um, and okay, so there are, there is a, um, there is an important thing to, 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 to see that, that actually that what you have here is, uh, is only the sign, right? So, so what you say is that this is only the sign in the, uh, we have wrote, so it's not the volume exactly. It's not, I don't care if you traded a hundred or a thousand, 
I look at the sign of it. We will see that this is, it's not by chance that we have this approximation, but okay, this is the way we wrote it up. And, uh, but then we'll look a bit at the volume dependence uh, as well. So, so okay, just let's, let's look at a function like this. Okay, so this is what we see on the left-hand side. So what we see is exactly this function, R as a function of L, time lag, in, in, in number of trades. Four different products. So, so let's, uh, there are, uh, the different curves are for different products. Uh, so two of them overlap, actually, I think. <laughs> anyway, so let's uh, forget the dashed line. You have three lines here, okay? So what you see, so this is, okay, this is the response of the, the market. So this is this measure, right? So, so given that there was a trade in, uh, at, at, at time, uh, time zero, uh, we sign uh, epsilon zero in this sense. How, how where does the price go up to time L? And so what you see is, uh, okay, we see a couple of things and we'll discuss this in details, but okay, you see first of all that, that you, have to, you seem to see that the, the, so the first point, so that there is some structure in it on short scales. So it, is, it flattens out for long times. There is some increase uh, on short times. And then probably not much more to see in the first approximation. So okay, let's, uh, so, so uh, just to write this up, so what you see is that and that uh, flattens out. Okay. So what is your, what is your idea of why this is happening? We, 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 okay, this is just an empirical effect. The idea is that it is, the, the fact that it's increasing on short time scales, it, it probably is due to, to, to the autocorrelation of the trades. So the fact that you saw a trade at time zero in one direction is autocorrelated with the trades in the next steps. So uh, this is our guess why, 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 why there is a time, there is a structure. It will, I mean, we will show this, but for now it's only a guess. But if it's our guess, then, then it means that maybe we want to look for other measures of impact because if we, if, if this response function that we are measuring actually is not just, uh, the measure of, of, of the response to this trait here, but to the response to all the, neck, all the subsequent correlated uh, trades in the market, then, then we have to do some deconvolution to, 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 to see things better, but okay, we will have, we'll see this later. And okay, what, what does it mean that this flattens out here? Th that is easier to understand, I think, is the fact that uh, if it continues to grow forever, it means that there is some type of predictability, right? That given that I know this thing here, I can know that the price will be increasing uh, much later. That contradicts several things that we have seen. It contradicts this unpredictability. So you can say, okay, so after a few trades, so, so okay, the time scale here is a order of a few seconds at most. Uh, this flattens out all predictability is, is, is excluded from the market and it stays flat forever, believe me, okay? Yes. Yeah, so there is, there is some type of response in it. Had it been to zero, then it makes sense that okay, at long times, it doesn't matter what you did in the past, but why it remained constant with the finite value, still I don't understand. Okay, we will see this uh, when, when we try to, we will get, we will see an answer to this. But it's so. Decaying exponentially. Yeah, because uh, the log is stationary at long times. Yes. So, so that means the, the correlation is on only in short time. So there is no correlation anymore. You, you, there was some correlation. You integrate the correlation essentially, and then the correlation is zero. So your integral is remains constant. But we'll see. We will see this more in detail. Try to try to understand what what's the effect of a single trade. So what we do now is try to go through empirical results and then try to understand this. There are things that you cannot measure explicitly. You, you have to have some model for it. Uh, this is it. Uh, okay. Sorry, so, so these two properties are based on, these two positive properties are based on empirical results. 
So this is an entirely empirical. This is just empirical. We will try to understand them in the next. But we have an idea of, I mean, I, I, I can give you a guess why it is the case. So the first one is due to the correlation in the order flow that, I've, that we've seen. The second is, okay, the second is not just a guess. If, if it weren't uh, flattening out, you have the feeling that there is a really long-term correlation in the price itself, which we, the price changes it themselves, which we know that is not the case, okay? Um, so, 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 so I just show some other thing which, I, which we won't uh, go much into detail here, but uh, actually on the right-hand side what I show is the, okay, on the x-axis we have some function of this response at leg one, okay, so the immediate response, so for, forget that it's, it's, it's proportional to this, and on the y-axis we have the spread. So, and what we see is that there is some type of linearish relation between the two, which is, uh, we, I won't go into details now here, it's just to, to, for you to think about it, so it's, Recall these models that we had on the other, in the other days, this Kyle and Gloucester Milgram model, especially the Gloucester Milgram, where you say that, okay, so the spread is, um, is what the market maker gains on you, but of course this, this, the, the, the price response is what he loses on you. The fact that you traded makes the price go up. So the fact that they are, okay, we don't see the proportion here, but they are similar things means that indeed this, this, uh, th there, is a, there is a competition between what he can gain on you and what he loses on you, and it is not exactly zero, but, but they are close. So I, uh, we won't discuss this in detail, uh, think about it a bit, okay? No, but because this is a correlation of, so this is, essentially this is the integral of the change of the price from T to L, right? So it means that the correlation of sine at t and the price change later in the time would go to zero. So this is somehow uh, epsilon t m uh, t prime plus one minus m t prime summing over t prime larger than t. Is, is this clear what I'm, oh sorry, is this clear? So the price change from t plus, to t, t plus L is the sum of price changes in each time. So, so, so this is an integrated correlation. So the fact that it flattens out means that the correlation itself went to zero. Is this clear? Okay, we can, uh, let's move on. We can discuss uh, afterwards. So, okay, so the right-hand side is just to, it's good to think about, uh, so, so, so things make sense. Uh, of, I mean, the type of models we discussed have some idea. So, but one thing you can, of course, do, okay, here we have only the sign, but of course, what, what could be interesting is, okay, sorry, one thing that we see here is that leg one and leg infinity seems to be different. Well, leg one, at least we know that nothing else happened just this trade up to then. So, we will concentrate a bit on this for now. Um, but of course, if you're looking for leg one, then this is just a number, not a function, not super interesting, but probably what should be interesting is to, what I tell you is interesting, is to look at the volume dependencies of this. So, so let's, this is a sign here, but of course you assume that it can depend on the volume. So if someone trades a quantity, a unit quantity, or a quantity of 1,000 in the same market, it should have different response. So, 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 what I, uh, so, so okay, well, well, what does one to write, one write to up, uh, one want to write up? So you want to look at the response at, okay, let's have L equal to one to a trade of size V, uh, absolute size V, so which has a sign, sign epsilon. Um, so which we will define in the following way. I mean, it's, it's very similar to what we have, so, so okay. Okay, no, no, nothing changed, but of course you want to condition on the fact that the volume at T was this. this is, these, these are all Vs. I, I write V in several ways, but it's always V. Okay? Simple. Uh, is it clear? Um, and okay, you want to look at this because you look at data, you, you, you want to understand the structure, you look at different things. There is also another uh, point is that 
Okay, you mechanically and, uh, would, estimate, would assume, so what does it mean to assume something as a mechanical impact? Well, you have, there is this underlying structure, so this, this uh, medium you could call, which is, the, which is the limit order book that we defined. So you can assume that there is a, some type of mechanical impact. The larger your volume, the more you will uh, uh, clear out volume from this limit order book. Is it clear? So in, in a super mechanical world, I mean, it's, 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 you can do nice models on this and moving in a random media. But also, if you want to be more in this economics language, also there is this question of information. Well, what you could imagine, maybe it's not true, but what you can imagine is that, okay, larger volumes should somehow contain more information. If you trade a lot, you know something. So even in an informational point of view, probably para price should move more if, if you're trading larger, right? So uh, let's see what it behaves. So this is what we see. So first of all, looking at... Uh, at, uh, so on the left hand side, what we see is, uh, is this measure here as a function of volume normalized in some way, which I won't define now for a second, okay? It's, 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 it's volume, just uh, if you want to, okay. And, uh, and what you see is that there's, there is some type of increase. Uh, it doesn't seem to be extremely increasing, but okay, there is an increase in it. Uh, still, you have the idea that from here to here there are uh, there is a one to two order of magnitude increase in the volume itself, and uh, the response doesn't seem to change that much. And actually, to, to be more explicit, we can see here uh, the, the the same type of figure on a log log plot. So the price shift as a function of the volume. And uh, okay, so you seem to have some exponent. Maybe we have to always say, so what is the exponent so that, that you can, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is simply what I'm doing here is I'm redefining defining a new response function. First of all, I put L to one. I only care about the leg one behavior. And I put a V here and I define that this will be simply the same type of response. Uh, sorry, this should be, of course, one. So L equals one. Uh, but I, it's a conditional expectation that the volume was VT. And what I consider mechanical impact, so, so yeah, that, that is, one has to do that. So we had all these ideas of, 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 of the volume in the limit order book. We plotted the limit order book. So you can have some, okay, you can have ideas of what is information, but you can also say, okay, so there is the, the quantity in the book. So we should always keep in mind this type of figure. So you have some, we saw that there are some volumes in the limit order book, right? Actually, I can tell you what the typical shape is just to keep it in mind. It's, it's important. So the typical shape is somehow something like this. Empirically. So this is the best bit. Is it okay? But, uh, we, we've seen it. So this is a, the typical shape of, of, of a book, but the mechanical impact, you can imagine that it's simply, okay, so if I'm trading, if I'm buying, I'm trading against these people here, the price move, I mean, in a very naive way, should be like you integrate the volume, you move the price up to them. So if you want to trade all this volume here, then you will move the price to up here. Okay, so is there, this is what I call a mechanical thing that you can, okay. Uh, but we'll get again back to this. So, so okay, this is what we can, we can see. You, maybe you have calculated the exponent in the, in the meantime of that thing there. So you see that it's a power law dependence and actually one can, uh, one can write this up that this will go somehow, I, I, I won't go into to, all the details, but it will have some type of the behavioral of behavior of this uh, so, so some power law. If you can see, there are some so it's it's more complicated, uh, but I don't want to go into all the details. But it's the volume dependence we care about. So why it's more complicated? Of course, you need an overall scale. So we are talking about prices here. You you, you have to some have some variable which which defines the proper scale of of. Uh, of, uh, of the response, but I mean, I think this is clear. I mean, this is more physics-like uh, issues, so, so this should, you should be used to. 
so there is a, an exponent here. So if you one looks at the exponent, it's, it's, it's low. So let's say you see here you move three orders of magnitude. Why? On the y-axis you move less than one. So actually this, 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 this guy here, so this exponent is, uh, is between uh, 0 and 0, 0,3 empirically. So it's a super weak dependence, right? Is it okay what I'm saying? Um, so it's a, okay, it's an extremely concave function. You could fit a log on it if you don't want a power law. It's, it doesn't really, uh, a, a low power log, uh, a low power, power law, which is similar to log. So, but what you see is a very weak dependence, okay? And the question is why is this dependence so weak? So, so one tries to understand uh, this. I think it's, it's, it's important also to have an idea of this mechanical picture. And so one way to, to do this is, okay, let's be explicit. So, so why is, the question is why is this dependence so weak on volume, okay? Why, how, how, to, uh, how to look at this? Well, we can look at, okay, let's look at the shape of the limit order book. And let's look, okay, how does the impact compare to, to this shape? So, so what I'm saying is that you could imagine some virtual impact, which I define now, is sim which is simply really the one-shot mechanical component. You say that, that uh, you integrate, so, so uh, ux will be the, UX volume in the limit order book at price X, okay? So it's this function here. I'm writing it a complicated way, but this function here, you have something there. And you can say that, uh, uh, so you, you can look at the integrated volume up to a price change R will be this, right? I, I, I'm not doing so. so. This is, let's say, cumulative, accumulated volume. Okay, so I'm just writing out explicitly what I was saying here. You can look at the function of the, the, the typical shape of the book. You can integrate it up, and then you say, okay, how should impact look like from this, which is the following, then the virtual impact of size. So a trade of size uh, I don't know, let's use another letter just to make size Q should have the following impact. Uh, uh, okay, actually, let's... Uh, okay, so, so, so to, to use the same language, sorry. Um... This is a capital V. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, so this is the same V as here. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think I'm saying it's complicated, but it's super simple what I'm saying. It's the integral of the vo volume in the book. You, you invert it, right? And so this assumes that, what does this assume? So what you do here is, is, the, is the average, yeah? So this is the integral. That's, that's wrong? This is the same, exactly. And what is important to keep in mind, of course, what you do here is, is the, this is the, 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 the average, so it's exactly this integral. You look at the average, say this, this can fluctuate around this shape. You're looking, okay, what is the average shape, shape, shape of the book? So what should the trade of size Q push the price? How much it should push the price? VR is the cumulative volume in the book. So it's, I'm, I'm integrating this function here. Or some, the, fun, the function I found empirically. And... Um, and so, okay, so, so this assumes that the trades are unconditional, and, and, and what we care about, of course, okay, in a first person, okay, let's compare what, uh, how this, so let's, let's compare this to what we actually measured before, and this is what you have. So, well, okay, it's a bit on another curve, other type of curve. So what you say, you have the blue, which is called true impact here, which is exactly what we have seen before, just on a, we are on a lean, lean scale, so things are, uh, things look different, but so, so the blue 
and there is a fit on it is, is, a, is a low power behavior. And the red one, which is this virtual, seems to be linear, right? And it's, okay, it seems to be linear, which we won't discuss. There, one can understand this. But especially what you see is that they are, two are very different, right? So this idea that, um, so what is the assumption here in this model, so in this virtual impact, is that it's okay to look at the average shape of the book and that, that, that's how the price, that, that, that defines the typical impact. And the fact that they are different tells us that it is, um, it is not at all a good, a good way to look at the market, is to look at the average shape of the book. Because the, well, the, the suggestion of this is that the trades that arrive are very much conditioned on the volume that is in the book. Is this okay? So they are not in random moments. How they are conditioned, of course, we don't understand from this. One can analyze the, the, the curves, but it's clear that there is a strong conditioning in the moment when a trade of size V comes. It's very conditioned. It's not a random moment. Which, okay, one can expect maybe, but uh, it's good to, to be able to measure it. And, um, and one more thing that I wanted to discuss um, on, on the same issue just is, uh, is that uh, is a bit in the same direction, so, so how things are considered. So I will just put on a, a figure. I won't, uh, I won't write up more, much details about this, but what can, what can one think about is, okay, so the trades are conditioned. So what co th there are moments when there are large price changes in the, in, in the market. What causes them? So is it, okay, in, again, in this picture, what you would think that, okay, price moves a lot, if there is a huge volume coming and eating up um, what's, what's on the opposite side, right? Um, it's a simple, so one, one somebody can, wants to buy a lot, he will move the price a lot. So what you can do, of course, here is that, uh, is the following. There will be a mechanical part that, of course, if you trade a unit quantity, so something extremely small, then you will, of course, never push the price. If, uh, if there is some liquidity there. So what you can say is, okay, let's condition on the cases when there was some price move. So the, the, the volume that came was larger than the size on the best. And let's let, try to see if there is any size dependence afterwards. So I will show, show you the figure and, uh, and, and try to explain. So what we show here is the distribution of price changes. It's what we have seen before. So, so the probability that there is a price change larger than x as a function of x. And what the four different five, how many lines? Five different lines are five different groups of trade sizes. Okay? So, so five uh, groups of V here. And what you can see that the distribution is super similar for these. So the, the, the very large trades on average trade change the price by the same amount as very low trades, which is a way to say that the moment when large trades come, is the moment when there is enough liquidity on their side not to, not to push the market too much. Is this okay? Someone should say something. <laughs> okay, is it not okay for someone? Okay, so, so, so this is what you see. So, so, so what do we see here? Price is, so, okay, there are some, uh, okay, all these things are, I think interesting. So, the, the volume dependence, the conditioning on the volume in the book. But the main, the, 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 the most basic thing that we have seen here is that this thing at leg one moves it. So, if you trade, it moves the price. Okay. This we have already said, but we have seen it explicitly now. So, R one is positive. Price moves in the direction of your day. So, the question is, okay, but we have seen it yesterday that the, we have seen yesterday that the, the signs are extremely autocorrelated. So, if these things are autocorrelated. So how can, uh, how can, how, how does this not cause inefficiency in the market? And so I will just breathe. I mean, one, one can come up with a guess, but we will be explicit. This I leave here, okay? And I can always get back to it. So, okay, so, 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 so we have seen persistence In epsilon, yesterday we have seen. Uh, so okay, this response function I consider known now. So I won't write as R one larger than zero. The question is, 
predictability in the price. Okay, so, and, and the question is, um, so, so, so the answer to this, yes, the, the, the price remains efficient. Um, so, so, okay, there are some, okay, I don't have to explain this, no? is, is it clear about the issue here? Because one, of course, we can write up explicitly that given that we know the correlation function, that tells us, given that we saw a buy, we know the extra probability that there will be pi and buy in the next second, all these things. But, but, the, but what we can actually look at is, is the following. We can, um, we can write up uh, two versions of this, uh, of this response function. So given that, uh, so this is a plus here. One can look at this. So what I'm doing is writing something very similar that we had before, but I'm doing a conditioning on whether the The price moving is okay. I, I'll let you write up, but L is one in this case. L is one, absolutely sorry. I mean, of course, you, 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 I could define it for L, but yeah. So this is L equals one. So I'm not conditioning on volume anymore. I'm conditioning on the fact that is the sign of trade at t is the same as t minus one, or it's the opposite. So sine is plus minus one, so we have an easy type here, okay? And um, which, of course, I mean, given the person, the, the stuff that I didn't write up, of course, the probability of this event is very different from the probability of this event if you're autocorrelated. And so what you can, well, guess if I wrote this up, that actually in practice what you can measure is that, that uh, so empirically, The, the, the first one is much is, is lower than the second one. Okay, so so while there is a we won't I mean I don't think I, I will share figure about this. So what what you can see that okay so there is a store of persistence in the order flow, but there is a different response in the market if the prediction was good or not. If I saw a trade of t sign epsilon t minus one, I have a good prediction that the, the sign at t will be the same. And actually, if my, my, my expectation is fulfilled, then the price change will be slow, smaller than if I'm surprised by the market. So this is how, how efficiency eventually gets, gets restored. Okay? The only way that it can happen, well, one of the ways that it can happen. Is it okay? Um, so there is no inefficiency, and 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 and, uh, and there is some type of asymmetric re response in the market uh, to to uh, to what's happening. So if, if 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 the expectations are fulfilled, there is a much smaller res response than if there is a surprise. So so I wanted to show some figures about the question of okay, we have seen uh, there there was this question of uh, that the, the response function is becomes flat for long times. Actually, I wanted to show a figure about this, which is a bit in a different, uh, well, different colors and slightly different language, but the same type of information in it. So what we see here is the blue is the response to a trade at time, uh, time zero. For, forget for now the difference. The left and the right is the same type of figure. There are differences, but it's not important for us. So let's look at the left-hand side. So the blue is, is the response function as we have seen it before. So it's, it's, it increases uh, to some level and then it's flat afterwards. And actually, yesterday we discussed, or today about the persistent order flow, we discussed, okay, but you can have knowledge about who is doing what. And actually in practice, if you look at, the, at this, you can write it up as being the sum of, of uh, 
of a response coming because of your own later actions, or oh, sorry, because of the later actions of the same broker that acted at time t0, so same is the same that's detected at, at zero. And you can look at actions of, those, of the other brokers. So this, this sets all, all the, the sum of the two should, should add to the total response. So what you do here is essentially do a further conditioning here. And what you find is that, okay, it was nice to say that, that there is a flat response on long times, but actually it's the sum of two very different behaviors. So, so you continue to trade and you're pushing the, you would be pushing the price up uh, constantly. And others are coming in the market and, and are well, either trading against you or putting large volumes to, to trade with you. So either with limit orders or market orders, trading against you, okay? So what I wanted to say with this is that, uh, is that okay, so there is an equilibrium. This blue curve is flat, but it's the sum of two, two very strong, a strong positive and strong negative uh, dependence with, 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 uh, with uh, the difference being the blue, which already suggests that we'll see in other cases that, okay, there is an equilibrium somehow, so this, the price uh, response is flat, but it should be somehow easy to break down this equilibrium. If this weak flat response is the sum of something very positive, very negative, you can expect that, that, that it's easy to break down this, 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 this subtle um, match of the, of, the, of the red and the green lines. Is it okay? Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, what's the time? Okay. Um, so all this, all this that we discussed here is, uh, is on single products. Of course, one can go to, okay, this is the same. Actually, one can, one can look at, one can define this type of functions, of course, on cross products. You could also say that, okay, given that I trade one product, what does the other product do? We won't go into detail here. There are some, it, it's an ongoing, actually very much ongoing field. There are some very nice papers. Visually, actually, it's a similar uh, my matrix that we saw for the cross correlation, but it's a, it's a different structure. It's, it's, there is a very interesting different structure. So but this, a, a matrix like this would mean that given that I trade this product here, how much does the price of this one go up or down? Of course, it's, it's a non-symmetrical matrix in this case. So, it's okay, but we won't discuss this. It's okay, yeah. So what you condition here is you, 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 so at time zero there was someone acting, it is the right guy in the case, and then you look, look at all his further actions up to leg 1000, and you consider, and, and you look at the, 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 the immediate, essentially you are, you are summing up the, the responses of each of his further actions, and you're summing up the, the response to, of, of, of the actions of others. Okay, so so let's move on. So so the so the, that, that that's more or less about uh, about impact of single trades. So what we see is that it, it exists. It's very much concave in volume. So it's it's weakly dependent on volume. And and what I want to discuss is uh, this next thing is is to discuss meta orders. That I, I defined before. So so as I said, okay, but it's good to repeat. So meta order is a is, is a series of trades which originates from the same person and from the same decision, okay? This, this, this we discussed. And uh, so, so you can be, be a bit, bit formal. So it's a, it's a decision to, to trade uh, quantity Q, an absolute quantity Q in a direction minus epsilon and uh, over a time horizon, okay, T. Okay, so it's to formalize it, what does it mean? I want to buy, my epsilon is positive, 2,000 stocks over one day, okay? And then, of course, what I will do is, is, is cut this up as we discussed several times. 
And, um, and okay, so the, the difficulty with this, I mean, which you should, should uh, think about, is that this is not a type of, of information that's easy to obtain. I mean, no one will tell you what, I mean, the, the actual trades in the market you can, you can look at. But what was part of the same big decision that is no one will tell. I mean, it's, it's hard to obtain data. So either you can go look around and ask from, for, from people. You can um, or, and obtain data like it. You, you can have some, some data of your own if, you, if you're in a company. Uh, which is the case for me, and uh, but it's hard to obtain. And actually, it's, I just want to mention that, of course, here I say, okay, it, it, it originates from the same decision. Actually, in practice, what you could say, yeah, sure, I just look at all the trades, and on some time horizon T, I want to aggregate all the trades in the same direction, and that will define my Q. So I, I could say that, okay, I look at all the trades in a day, I sum up what are buying trades, and I say, okay, that, as if it was one big meta order. It's a, it's a very bad proxy. It would give something completely different from what we see here. So it's really important that it, it's the same decision. It, it's hard to understand why exactly, but it, it's, it's important. So this is what we want to look at the impact of this so, so on overall time horizon. So what you want to, there are two types of, so, of impacts you can look at here. So you can say, okay, I want to look at the impact at the peak, so at the very end when I executed all my trades. So you can define, so to be, you can define this thing here peak uh, of a meta order size Q and T as, well, essentially this. Okay? So usually, obviously, what we expect typically that there is a symmetry between buying and selling. So yes, you, you, you can... You don't have to look at separately. You don't have to condition on epsilon and do separate, uh, separate, separate functions. So, okay, it's, it's, it's sorry, this is equal. Uh, so this is a trivial measure. Sure, you want to see how much the price changed on all this time scale, but but the important is just one decision. Another thing that you can do actually is is to is to look at the path dependence of this. So what you can say is that okay, I okay, write it up, then I explain. So. It's path dependent. So, what was my impact? Given that I wanted to trade Q, capital Q and capital T, or over capital T, and for now I traded small Q in this time scale, in, in this time uh, that have passed, so we are at time T now. What is my expected impact? So, so what is the, the expectation of epsilon times the price change up to small t? given that up to small t I trade small q, and in total I want to trade this. Okay, so simple. In practice, actually, well, again, there, there is some type of luck in the world that, that the two give very similar. So actually, the market doesn't know why, when you're going to stop trading. So the fact that you trade up to small q up to now, good, but the fact that you want to trade capital Q is not known. So typically, what, what, what one can write up is, uh, is the following. So, so this stuff here that we had. Okay, so um, I won't go, um, it's easy expectation that I'm right. So luckily the market doesn't know the fact that you traded small Q until small t, the market doesn't know that if you're continuing or not on average, so it will be, it will be this measure. It will be S if you wanted to trade this, oh, this oh, in total. Uh, lowercase Q is the quantity you traded up to lowercase t. So yeah, I could have put another index there. So okay, so this is what uh, the two type of, of, of impacts one can define, so peak and, 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 the, and the past dependence. And there will be, of course, we, we will discuss a bit later, okay, so what happens if you stop trading? When you stop trading, okay, you push the price, but 
after the peak there might be something happening. We will discuss a bit about this uh, uh, at the end, uh, I hope, today. So, and, and what is the, the, the rule for this? So how does this, uh, this I peak look like in practice? Well, it looks in the following way, which is, I think, one of the most intriguing uh, issues, at least for me, uh, in, uh, in much of, of this, uh, well, in this course. It, it has some type of behavior like this, and I will define all the men, all the numbers in a second, or all the parameters in a second, something like this. Okay. So what do we have here? The impact of trading Q over horizon T will be, okay, this is a number, okay, let's say, let, let's consider that it's one. It's order one, it's not exactly one. In practice, it's important for us. It's not very important. Here you have the volatility of the price on, this, uh, on the same time scale, time horizon T. Okay, how much the price typically moves in this, this, uh, this time window. That you Here you have VT, which is the volume of others. In the same horizon T. So, what percentage of the total volume are you trading? To some exponent delta. So that's 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 not hard. So, so how does it look like actually here? Here there is a curve. So this, okay, it's again. So what's the exponent? It's, it's always a good test. So what's the exponent of this? Uh, what, what's what's delta? Actually, it's, 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 there is even a hint on it. <laughs> so what's the delta? What's the delta and why? Yeah, but how would you argue that it's written on it, delta? Exactly, I, I didn't remove it this morning, so how would you argue that it's one half? Yeah, so it, it, it's good to have an idea. So indeed, here you move one order of magnitude, while there you move two. And it's, uh, it's to approximate. So there is, okay, and then in practice you have, so, so this delta in practice is maybe between uh, 0, 0,4 and 0, 0,7, close to one half. And actually, so, 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 so the low is called square root impact low. Square root impact of meta orders, okay? Uh, which, okay, it, it seems trivial. So what do we see here? Actually, this is for, so the two curves are slightly different contracts. It's for futures contracts. It doesn't matter to us very much. What we can see is that essentially on four orders of magnitude, we have this parallel behavior. I mean, to, for us, on a log log being linear is a power law, but you can test for the power lowness properly of these curves. And, uh, okay, it's important to know that, that you need a lot of data to measure this. So, so to measure this type of thing, you need like 10 to the power five of meta orders at least. So, so which you say if there is one per day typically by, it's, it's a long time that you need a long, lot of data. And okay, what I wanted to, before discussing what this means, I wanted to just discuss other two, two other curves which are very similar visually. Uh, so the first one that we've seen was for futures contracts. Here we see one on, uh, on options. I won't discuss exactly the units here, but the same idea, right? You see the same type of behavior with a power maybe a bit lower than one half. Again, how much is the, the, the volatility in case of options or the price of the option impacted by your trade? And on the left-hand side, you can see it actually on a completely different market, which is on the Bitcoin, which, uh, which, uh, which is again a very similar, so buy, buy and sell separately, you see that the, the same type of behavior can be measured. Okay, so it's, uh, well, it's interesting that it's universal. If it weren't universal, we wouldn't discuss it much here. And so what is the consequences of this? So, I mean, everything is seen here, I think, that should be understood, but, but, but it's, it's good to explicitly write up. So the consequences... Hmm? Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, okay. so, 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 so what is the consequence of the power law? Well, that it's not linear. I mean, the power law is... The, the square root, that it's not linear, okay, it's, it's trivial. So, so in practice, what does it mean? That the first half of your trading, so you want to trade 1,000, and the first 500 will push the price much less, uh, much more than the, than the, so 
You want to trade 1,000, the first 500 will push, push much more than the second 500. Okay, it's, I mean, this is what it means that it's not linear, it's, it's concave. So, okay, uh, obvious, concave. Which, in a sense, one can, uh, one can write, so, so, so there is some anomalously. high impact of, uh, of small meta orders. Okay, so obviously, I mean, uh, mathematically this is diverging at, for, for, for quantity being zero. Um, okay, in an actual system you have discretization, so it's not diverging exactly, but there is a very high impact for small meta orders. Concave, so, what does concave mean? That there is some memory in the system, right? So, so if, you, if the first half of your trades have more impact than the second half, it means that somehow the system remembers that you did the first half. So there is some memory in the system on some probably finite scales, so for not forever, but there is, uh, it's, it's, it seems to be an interesting system. Is that clear? And uh, everything is clear, I hope. And... Um, and okay, so what does this mean? We will get back to a bit orders of magnitude uh, soon, but um, what does this mean? That anomalously high impact of, uh, of small orders? Well, okay, so if you can look at, so see if, if Q over V is uh, 1%, so you're one hundredth of the market, which is big, but okay, it's, it's not, it, it can be. This would mean that, that, that I is 10%, of the of the volatility, right? So you're moving by being one percent, you move the price by ten percent of your typical daily fluctuation. So it's, it's it's a big number. It's 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 a it's a big effect. Okay, I mean it's the same. I mean, all I'm saying is seen here, and uh, and okay, one one more thing in, which is I think important, which might not be seen explicitly there. That okay, we wrote t here. There is sigma t and v t. But actually, if you look closer, there is no really no explicit t dependence here. So actually, in practice, what you can assume is that sigma t will behave like the square root of t. And you could assume that vt, so what is vt? It's the total volume traded in the market in this period. Well, that is on, to a first approximation, could be linear in time. So in two times more time, there is two times more volume traded in the market. So which would say that, that, that there is no t dependence of your impact, okay? Is this okay? If you do the same thing in one hour or in two hours, it will have the same effect. This is an empirical fact, of course, it's not. I mean, if you do it, if, if you do in a large volume in one second, then it might be. So, so I mean, of course, it's, it's uh, for uh, well-defined T's, of course. Well, all this that we write here is, uh, is on, a, on average works on, on relatively, <coughs> no, not infinitesimal windows. Yes, 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 sorry, yes. The, the exact T dependence depends, the, yeah. So I wrote delta here because I showed that it can be slightly different than squared, but it will be, even if it's zero four, it's like, it's a very, in practice actually, there are papers that claim that there is some dependence to the power 0, 1, 0, 2, which is, okay, you believe it or not, it's super hard to, to verify. But maybe it's very weak. If there is, it's weak. Yes? So we, we have also said that uh, like, uh, big trades and, uh, and small trades in volume have the same impact. The, but those were single trades. Okay. Those were also, so in the moment when single trades arriving. Okay. And what we have seen is that it's essentially a conditioning effect. That the, it's a conditioning effect. So we compare this virtual impact, so just the integral of the volume inverted, and the actual impact, and we saw that it's, it's, it's essentially due to a conditioning. Large volumes arrive when there is large available liquidity in the book. But what we are seeing here, these are on, on longer time scales executed, and here we see that there is a quantity dependence, sublinear, but there is. Okay, and so, so I said that it's universal, we showed, showed here, some of the universality, but I just want to mention clearly that uh, that uh, that it's true for different type of markets, so equities, futures, options, pa pa pam, 
uh, for different time periods. So, okay, here these are quite recent data. We did it. Uh, but for, since the mid-90s, there are many results showing this. So in, dif in different periods, when completely different structure, markets had completely different structures and uh, different execution styles. So, so it really seems that, that, uh, that, that it's, it's a universal effect. So some minor things in the, how the microstructure works, if there is one market maker or seven, or everyone can be market maker, these do, these do not affect this result. It's, 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 it's quite universal. And, uh, okay, and so I can say claims that, I think in physics you, you know this, that the fact that, 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 that so in most systems what you expect is the response to be linear, so small kicks have small effects. The fact that, that, uh, that, that this is not the case is, uh, okay, it's usually some, some being close to some critical point and having uh, long range correlations and Things like this. So we will see actually what critical means in the case of liquidity. So why is it? Why is this susceptibility to the system um, infinite to, 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 to small trade sizes? So we will discuss in, in models. But I mean, th there are all these uh, things which I think are clear from this that, that, that you can think about. Um, and uh, and I wanted to sh discuss two more things. What's the time? Okay, it's perfect. So, so I wanted to discuss two things. So one is, uh, okay, actually uh, I will, I will sweep, switch the two things. So first I want to, so I, I also wanted to give a bit orders of magnitude for this. So, so because, I, okay, I gave an order of magnitude here, but I think it's, it's interesting to understand really the consequence of this, of this type of impact. So, so what, uh, what, it, what would it be, when, when does it matter for you? And then I will discuss briefly uh, the, the, the decay. So, so, so I wanted to discuss two things. One is, one is about costs. Okay, so, so we are discussing about all these impacts so, so that you are yourself changing the price. You're, there is a response to you, so it's more in a physics language, but it's, it's also an actual cost. This, so how, what does it, why is it a cost? Because you want to buy, but the actions, because you think that the price will go up, but actually you are pushing the price up and you're my, buying much higher than when you want, what you wanted. And you, this is a cost for you, right? You had some idea of gaining and that's why you trade and, uh, and it's a cost, is it clear? Um, and so one can, uh, if, you, okay, let's forget about this why. I said it's order of one, let's imagine that it's exactly one. If it's not the case, and, uh, okay, so, so let's assume that the cost is exactly defined in this manner, which in practice won't be the case because if you're moving the price on a square root, then the average price that you pay will be the integral on this square root, and which will be two-thirds two of the highest point. So that there are some order one effects, but one, we can imagine that these do not matter. And so let's go to, back to the previous question. So when we look at the limit order book, we see that, okay, the, the, the the, the, the fixed cost of trading, so the question of cost, so there is a fixed cost of trading if you are not the market maker, so if you're really trading as market orders, which is the half spread, okay? So the half of this difference we discussed here, and actually just to give an order of magnitude, so this to for, for, uh, for relatively liquid market, I would say this is 10 to the minus four of the price of the product. Okay, we will, we will argue everything in the price of, of the unit price that you have to pay because what you carry is that if you buy something for a 100, which is, which is worth 100, what you carry is compared to 100, what is this, uh, what is this value that is in the spread? It, compared to 100, it will be one cent. 100 dollars will be one cent. Which actually, this is called base one basis point, but it doesn't really matter. So this would be the fixed cost, and what would be, okay, so, so I said this, this stuff here, so what would be, if you trade, uh, let's say trading 1%, how much uh, we can, okay, we have to assume something. So trading 1% of the market, so 1% is Q over VT. Let's say, let's say VT, let's say T is a day, okay? So it's on a daily scale, you take 1%, and we have to have an estimation. So let's say that sigma is uh, 2%, okay? Which is, a, which is a typical daily fluctuation of, uh, in, in practice. Okay, so, so just to have some, some, uh, some numbers. So what would this mean? So if we forget Y and some things, it would mean that, so your, uh, 
let's say, cost, so impact cost, you can calculate from this would be something like 2% times uh, the square root of 1%, which will be 2 times 10 to the minus 3, I think. So it's, uh, let's say, right, 10, 20 times 10 to the minus 4, okay? So, 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 so trading 1%, which is okay, it can be something. Actually, what, you, what, what it costs you that you yourself are pushing the price is 20 times higher than, uh, than what, what the fixed cost was, what you saw in the market, what, what you would have guessed in a simple manner, up to some factors. So this is one way to look at it. Actually, another one, so someone asked this question at lunch or at, I don't know, with someone I chatted, so, so yeah? Yeah, so the fixed cost simply ma means that, let's imagine a limit order book like this, you want to buy, so it's this buy, this price that you are going to, uh, you send a market order, you want to buy, so it's this price that you get. And if you just look at this, then your best guess of the price would be probably here. So the difference between the two is exactly the half spread, which is order of 10 to the minus four times the overall price. The, the price of the product. You have a product of which costs 100, and a, a stock on Microsoft costs 100. Pre, in empirically, the typical size of the house spread would be 10 to the minus 4 times 100, 0.01. One, and why I'm arguing, I, I want to be without dimensions. I'm, I'm, I, everything is in the same units. What you care is that, okay, I obtain something, and what fraction of this do I have to pay in a cost? So in another type of question that came up, uh, which I think is good, good to think about, is that, okay, so this is 1%, but that's big, right? So at what size, can, can we come up with something super hand-waving uh, equation of, okay, for what Q star over V, which I will, for simplicity, I would call X. So what size do the, does impact dominate or becomes larger than uh, fixed costs, which is the spread, okay? So I'm going to do the same calculation, just I, with, 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 uh, with an unknown in it. Is it okay? And okay, so anyone can, so just taking the same, uh, say, say same numbers, one can write up, I hope I didn't make an error, but what, what you would write up is, uh, is, uh, is the same thing. So you want to say that, that uh, yes, so, so what I think would come up to me, okay, let's check this, so it would be the following, so x would be something like 0 0.25 times, 10 to the minus 4. So what I'm doing here, I'm looking for the x for which this thing becomes uh, 1 BP equal to this, okay? So what does it mean? So, so x is the, your fraction of the market that you're taking. So you're slightly larger than 1 in 100,000. Okay, so it's, it's a small number, at least it seems relatively. So this is the point where, where actually these impact costs start to be bigger than, than the fixed costs that you would have, okay, why I'm saying this, the fixed costs you see in the market, you can look at it and you can guess for, the, for these uh, impact costs, you, can, you have to have a model for you and that you have to, and so what does this mean? Just, just I, yesterday I look at, looked on the internet what this means. So, so let's take the Apple, which is a super liquid stock, the stock of Apple, I'm not talking about fruits, a super liquid stock, just the first example that one, one looks at, and what I saw that the day before, so probably it was one day leg, the, the daily volume on Apple, Uh, okay, this you wrote up. So, so what, I, what I found, but okay, it can vary, but I found that, that daily volume, so for example, of Apple, daily volume, okay, let's put a D here, was the order of 10 to the 7 shares times, so, so and the price, I think, was like 175, okay? You can put VD divided by P, into, I mean, you can put all this into the equation, what you get is the, 
is the size where this starts to dominate is that if, you, if, you, if your trade is uh, order of 50,000 uh, dollars, okay? If you trade $50,000 in the market, you're, you start to, your impact already, so you, you, you're super small, your impact starts to be 50,000, okay, seems a lot. Of course, you don't go and, uh, and I don't go trade 50,000, but, but it's a small number. It's uh, a company can easily trade these amounts and much, much more. So it's an imaginable number, right? So it's, it's, it's even there you, you start to dominate. Okay, over, already below that, this, it's, it's a non-negligible number. And just to give a, I just wanted to give a, why actually this is a super, this area is studied a lot actually in, in, um, in companies, which is okay, there is the answer to this why it is. But just, for example, in the company where I work and studying impact, the order of magnitude paid in impact in this type of cost a year is, for, I think, $250 million or something like this. Which means that, uh, which, which is just your, your loss because of trading, right? Which means that, okay, if you can make it 1%, you can have a model which, which, uh, which decreases it by 1%, then uh, it means a lot. Because, of course, we wrote up this, this, this square root equation, but, uh, but, of course, one can work on trying to decrease the prefactor or change the system. Uh, okay, and one more thing I wanted to say, then we stop, is... Um, is what we discussed up to now is, okay, what does the price do while you're executing, while you're trading? It goes up as a square root, okay. Uh, there is also the question of what happens afterwards, right? So, so what does, does, does it relax back? Does the price stay there? If the price stays at the level where you pushed it up, at least, okay, you changed the state of the market, you might have gained less, but you still, you bought and the price is higher than before. You also bought at a higher price, so, so you gain less, but still it's there. Of course, if the price then reverts, then you're not happy. If, if, if you have a picture like this, if you have a picture like this that you start trading, uh, let, let's go into, into, we are in time now. It doesn't really matter. We could be in volume. You start trading, you push the price up as a square root, okay? Actually, on average, this is the price that you're paying. You can do the average on a square root. And okay, if the price stays here, great. You, you still made some money on it. But of course, if the price then decays, then you are really in shit. You pay this price, and afterwards the price comes here. So it's it's an important thing to understand. Actually, it's not at all well understood, and I don't even have the figure. Oh, I thought I have a figure about it. I'll have it tomorrow. But actually, what what happens in practice is. Uh, is that, okay, it's very hard to measure because the longer you look in time, the more the volatility dominates everything. So you seem to have a decay, and it's not clear, so uh, with some power low, ex uh, some exponent, some low exponent, and it's not clear if it goes to zero or to a final price, and just one thing to think about in this, uh, I won't discuss it here, that of course, where the price decays afterwards is very important for something which is called price manipulation. So something that I didn't discuss at all here, but of course, if your actions change the price, is it possible that you just do trade, trading in a way to change the price to, to, to gain on it? So can, can, can it be the case that I start buying, I push, uh, okay, since there is a memory in the system, it could be the case. So, so what you want to say is you do a round trip, you, you buy 100 and you sell 100, you own nothing in, in you have nothing afterwards. Can you gain money on this? In a simple world, if you only have like a, the, 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 the square root, you would say, okay, you do this when you push the price up, you buy here, and uh, you do this when you push the price down, and you sell here, and you lost money. But of course, mathematically, you can come up with dependencies on uh, the way you're impacting here and on time of, type of decay, which could allow you to make a money machine out of this. If impact was linear, you're doing exactly this, and you don't, you're, uh, what are the time scales on that graph? On this graph? Yeah. Well, I didn't define much time scale here. It's, uh, the, okay, I'll answer this in the question. So, it's, we won't discuss it at all here, but of course, it's a very important question. You want to, you, you don't believe that the market can be easily manipulated in a way that you just buy and sell, buy and sell, no idea what the price would do, and you're just gaining because of your own actions. 
or if it's the case, you want to change the rules of the market, but probably it's not the case. But there is a, it's, it's, it's a very interesting literature to, to understand this. And it's the case is on any scale, you don't want to be able to do this, of course. It's, it's on a single trade as well. You don't want to just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. But you also don't want to be able to buy now, wait for 10 days, and buy during two days, wait for 10 days, then sell. What you expect is the same, is that you don't, you expect the price, the, 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 no, not to be able to gain on this movement in itself without having a prediction on the price. But that's short enough to be independent of the economics behind the price. Sure, but if there is the economics behind the price, we, we, we consider that here, here what we consider in any cases, as we discussed it in the beginning, is that your expectation is that the price, you don't have a prediction on the price. On long time, sure, you can have, of course, you can make money because you have a good prediction, but not because of you pushing the price there and back. Also, actually, it's illegal. It's called price manipulation. It's, of course, illegal to trade in a way to just gain, I mean, to, to, to push the price to some artificial level. But, but that's another thing we don't discuss. But actually, mathematically, it's a very interesting problem of, of uh, what type of uh, decay is allowed. For example, if you have square root impact, what type of decay is allowed to have a non-manipulative price, non-manipulable price? I think, for example, the result, if you have a power law increase, you probably have to have uh, some other exponent power law decrease. If you had an exponential decay, you, it would be, you can prove it mathematically that, that you can manipulate the price. Okay, let, let's stop, yeah. So the problem is that we don't know how much in luck, luck the power law decrease, right? So no, the ink, well, okay, also the increase is hard to know. Is, it, is this true? I, 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 I was a bit vague in the definition of, so you have a meta order, but is this true if I, have a def if I decide to buy for a year all the time? Will I follow this power law? You cannot test it. Uh, so the, and and you, you, you think that there is a memory in the system, but it won't be an infinite memory. But there are things that empirically is hard to test it. But what is more important, I think, is that, okay, you traded in one direction. There you can measure things. But then you stop trading and you just wait for the price to do what it does afterwards. And you have strong ideas of how it should behave. You can measure certain things, but, but it's, not, it's not a well-decided question. I will show tomorrow a, a figure. I wanted to show a figure, but I forgot. Can I ask another question? You said that it's not legal to uh, play in a way to protect the price because of the But how do you know if a person is doing this or not? I don't know. No, but the, the, there are regulators whose job is to try to understand this. You can. Okay, the way it works in a market is that actually someone can come to you and ask you, okay, so why did you do this trade? Okay, you can always come up with a nice story. But uh, no, it, it, it's a hard, so it, it's a bit, uh, surely there are many people who try to manipulate the price. Actually, it can happen also without wanting to do bad. You're optimizing, you're trying to optimize all that we saw on impact. And by chance, you fall into, to, it's not obvious to know, but, but so it's and, it's, and then there are the policemen trying to come after you, but you're. Okay, but are they the same, uh, like you said at the beginning, the speculators? Are these, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I would, yeah. Okay. Thank you.